This is Demo Day. Think of it as kind of a debutante ball for startup companies, where founders meet their funders. Anyway, good to meet you, Matt. Good to meet you. Yeah. Um, These entrepreneurs are trying to charm deep-pocketed investors. The startup company founders want the investment dollars to get their businesses off the ground. The funders are looking for the next Facebook, Groupon, or even Google. I was there for you. It's a hardcore, high pressure, big stakes, and uh, at the end you probably are going to close some funding. Before they made it to this ball, these entrepreneurs went through a startup accelerator, like a boot camp for new businesses. Accelerators, or incubators as they're sometimes called, are companies that provide guidance and expertise for new startups. Our entire vision is to make open source easy for organizations to use. This one in San Francisco, called AngelPad, is an intense 10-week course started by a group of ex-Google employees who want to mentor and invest in the next wave of Internet-based technology companies. Because of Vungle, video will become the way that app developers acquire users. We want to enable anyone, anywhere to sell online on any platform with ease and simplicity and elegance. Just for AngelPad, they had 2,000 uh, applications for 15 slots. So it's like winning the lottery just to get in. And then once you get in, you have to work your ass off. You have to go without sleep for nine weeks, you know, working all around the clock trying to improve your product so that you have a great pitch when you end up at the demo day. The vast majority of startups will fail. Um, I think, you know, the. The way we can change that is, is, is to give founders a lot more tools to succeed. Thomas Corta is the managing partner and founder of AngelPad. So we'll look really for three things. Number one is we'll look for an amazing team, uh, people that have a deep understanding of the problem that they're trying to solve. We're looking for technical people that um, can actually build um, and solve that problem by using technology. And the third one is we will look for, for founders and teams that show leadership, that can build interesting companies, that can hire people, can uh, you know, build big companies and lead them. The mentors advise the startups on everything from products and design to customers and fundraising. They also provide a close-knit community of other startup founders and experts. If uh, one of our lawyers comes in to explain how the funding process works or what these legal documents look like, you know, he can do that once instead of 15 times individually. In exchange, the accelerators get stock in each of the new companies they propel. So introduce me to some of your companies. Yeah, sure, let's walk around. Okay. In the weeks leading up to Demo Day, I met with some of the founders and learned more about the accelerator course. What's mydeal.ly, my dealy do? So my dealy, uh, it's mydeal.ly. We help daily deal buyers manage all of their deal purchases in one place. We allow them to share their deals with friends and also to discover relevant deals through their social network. W what about this process? What have you learned in the past couple months? We've been really lucky to be around 14 other really talented teams and we learn a lot from each other. And then on top of that, the mentors have really helped us take what we originally started and make it a bigger vision. So taking what we think was a cool idea and really turning it into a business. The idea of startup accelerators isn't new. Most follow the model laid out by Y Combinator in Mountain View, which has been running since 2005. To date, there are more than 300 Y Combinator-backed companies out there. This summer, it launched 63 new startups in a single day. Some wonder whether this is sustainable. I do worry that there is sort of a um, an overcrowding effect, I guess, going on. I think in this case, there is a bit of a bubble happening because I'm not sure that these companies are coming up with services and products that are, you know, each, each service and product that comes out has to distinguish itself from all of the others. And the more companies there are in this space, I think the harder it becomes for them to set themselves apart. Wade Rausch covers innovation and entrepreneurship for X Economy. He's followed startups for the past 15 years and says the internet startup frenzy is back mainly because the cost of technology keeps dropping. Back in the 90s, um, a typical startup had to go out and raise millions of dollars, you know, 5, 10, 15, or 20 million dollars just so that they could go and buy the servers that they would need to host their applications so that people could come and find their services on the web. It's now possible to raise $100,000 or $200,000 and if you're willing to you know, eat ramen, as they say, for, for a couple of years, uh, that's enough money to actually uh, make real progress. It may be easier to start a company today, but higher volume means more competition. 
in a space where the failure rate of startups is already incredibly high. The U.S. economy creates 700,000 new companies every year and 675,000 of them fail without, and that's sort of like clockwork. And I'm not sure that the incubators can really do much to, to change the overall math. Dot-com bubbles bursting may send shivers up some investors' spines, but the Kauffman Foundation recently found that startups are responsible for three million new jobs a year, while older companies lose a million jobs annually. Tech insiders and proponents point to these startups as the last big advantage of American business. Vivek Wadwa is an entrepreneur turned academic who researches American competitiveness. What I found is that America is in real trouble, that the things that made us what we are, we're forgetting. The rest of the world is learning from us. They're copying our, our strengths. We're the most entrepreneurial, most innovative country in the world. We need to do more of it. We need to encourage, you know, and we need to be having hundreds of thousands of new startups over here because some of them will become very successful multi-billion dollar businesses. They'll become the next General Motors, the next Walt Disney, the next Google, the next Facebook. We need, you know, thousands more of those and America will win. Leading the way are startups like these, incubated and accelerated by those who've gone before. What's really great is that this is one of the job creators in America. Uh, so for American business, this is awesome. But you see all these startups that have gotten a few, a few million dollars of funding and they start taking off. It gives me hope for the future. While it's still too early to tell which one of these companies might become the next Google or Facebook, as these entrepreneurs get backing from investors, one thing is certain, they'll be hiring.